with Memphis's downfall, selling less tickets in the 80s over the years, because 82 was such a great year, 86 is the last sellout they'd ever have in the Mid-South Coliseum. How much of that belongs to WWF indirectly putting out such a highly slick production and affecting sales, or was it something oh, else? It's directly, <clears throat> because there was no talent. There was no talent to get because all your top guys had been had been gobbled up by WWE. So, I mean, it was they put out such a slick product. What's that old saying? How you gonna keep them down on the farm after they've seen Broadway? <laughs> I mean, that's an that's an old saying, but you know, Memphis was just a a local, regional, taped interview studio show. But you see WWE, the big, the big uh, arena and the lights and the music and the fireworks. Well, when Memphis Wrestling would open up, you would have Lance Russell saying, "Yowza, yowza, yow!" <laughs> <laughs> and somehow that doesn't. Re- and I love Lance. Somehow that doesn't compete with the product that WWE put out. Plus, and 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 what happened was. WWE, they had all these territories at one time feeding them talent. Then when they took over the country, guess what? Their feeder system died. Mm-hmm. It died on the vine. That's why they had to invent their own performance center in Orlando because they had nowhere for these guys to get experience and these guys to get trained. So they kind of... They kind of bit themselves in the foot on that. What was the first year? I know, I know it's a long time ago, but what was the first year do you think that the WWF really started affecting business? Because obviously not in 82. The national expansion starts around 83. Not 85 is WrestleMania. Did you, was it around WrestleMania or 85 time? Was it earlier? 85, 86, I think, was where they were. Did t- well, you see, a, a, a lot of people that watch these regional shows – if that's all they had to watch, they were fine with it. But if they had to watch <clears throat> between a WWE production or a WWF production and a, you know, a, the local station, well, they'd prefer to watch the fire and the glitz. And that, and that's what they would do. Yeah. I would say in the mid eighties, that's when Vince really started making a difference. And, and most of the guys, but we had predicted that for years, not we, but the wrestling community. Mm-hmm. Had predicted well. It's all going to be one big, uh, one big company at the end. And of course, as much as I didn't want to believe that, uh, because that's going to affect everybody. That's going to affect ninety percent of the talent in the business at that point, because WWE—they're only going to use so many people. Did Vince so it McMahon? Would, it, it would. It would affect income. Did Vince McMahon ever specifically target? You, you know. Nashville, Memphis, Tennessee area to host WWF shows in an effort to, you know, harm the Memphis territory. Or did Vince not really go there that often uh, in he the did, 80s? Well, he, he didn't book the shows, but he would he would pick Memphis because it was such a hellacious wrestling town. Hmm. And then he would pick, uh, say, New Orleans because it was a hell of a wrestling town. So. Uh, because of the in uh, because of the 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 native uh, uh, groups there promotions, you know they had great towns that did you know traditionally well. So he he targeted those towns, and I don't know if he did that to, I don't think he did it to hurt the promotion, but he he did it to help himself and by by history, end up drawing a good house. Mm. And when the people see this, you know, the local promotion looks secondary, and they were. Mm. 